In this video, I will share a four-step guide on how to write a high-quality literature review. The literature review is one of the most time-consuming parts of a research project, with supervisors providing minimal, clear guidance. Following my approach, you will be able to write a high-quality critical literature review that will impress your supervisors, examiners, reviewers, and readers of your work. In this video, we assume that, to a certain extent, you have clarified your research topic and now you want to review or critically review the literature and, of course, write a literature review. Now I will share my four-step practical approach to write a high-quality critical literature review. Using this method, you can look at the literature review as a chain of blocks that need to be structured. Each major block can represent a section in your literature review chapter with a heading. Within each big block, there will be multiple smaller blocks, which are subsections under each heading. Also, within each subblock, you will have the smallest blocks, which are your paragraphs. So the first step is to design the hierarchical structure. Finally, you need to fill these blocks with relevant literature materials. Doesn't this approach look like storyboarding for film production? Let's examine this method more closely. The first two steps of this four-step approach that I've named them structuring focus on organizing your literature review. And the next two steps, referred to as content development, cover the creation of necessary content for each section in the design structure. And this is an iterative process. So you may move forward and backward in this process to develop your literature review. Stage A, structuring your literature review. Step 1. Identify good samples to follow. To prepare a good structure for your literature review, start your work with searching for recently published studies and theses similar and very similar to your work as well as reviews and systematic literature review paper on your topic as samples to follow. These samples will give you good ideas to structure your literature review. Depending on your topic and how niche it is, you may get around 3 to 10 papers that are good and can be used as samples to follow. To search, use search engines and data databases like Google Scholar, Science Direct, Scopus, and search for the literature that you need. Ensure you use Boolean operators to improve your search results. To do an efficient search, see my video on searching for literature. I will post a link in the description of this video below. Please keep this in mind that your role as a researcher is to assess and evaluate the literature that you find and filter the low quality ones. So ensure that your literature review is built on high quality articles and books. To know how to evaluate research sources, watch my video on quality assessment of literature sources. I will post a link to this video in the description below when it's ready. Step two, structure your literature review. After identifying a few good samples, you need to carefully analyze the structure of their literature reviews. Based on your analysis, you can then design the structure, storyline, and flow of your own literature review, taking inspiration from the structure of the selected samples. At this step, you need to specify the headings you want to consider in your literature review chapter, and where you want to start and where to end each heading. You need to decide where and how to discuss the theories, concepts, and areas of literature that you need to cover. Then you should zoom in more and think about the storyline in each section and its paragraphs. Look at your literature review like a chain of blocks of information and decide what each block aims to cover. And these blocks should be joined and linked to have a nice flow of writing. You can use mind mapping software packages like Miro to structure your literature review. In terms of the overarching King structure, I personally prefer a funnel approach for writing the literature review. It means moving from the broad and general to the detailed and specific areas. So you start with the broader aspects of your topic and then narrow your focus until you reach your specific research questions and the specific problems that you are addressing. For example, if your study is about breast shape satisfaction, you may start with reviewing the literature on body image and then narrow it down to breast shape satisfaction. Or if your study is about the role of independent directors in a company, you may start your literature review with reviewing the literature on corporate governance and then narrow it down to board of directors and then to independent directors roles. And another example, if your study is about older adults online banking, you may start with a broad discussion like digital inclusion and then narrow it down to online banking and finally to the online banking of older adults. Depending on your topic, you may consider several levels to narrow down your literature review. Part B, fill the sections and paragraphs in the structure. Now that you have designed the structure and blocks of information of your literature review, you need to fill these blocks, sections, and paragraphs with 
with existing literature and a critical review of past studies. Step three, search for literature to fill the blocks of information. As you have the structure of your literature review, you know what materials exactly you need to fill the blocks. Use the search engines to find the literature you need. In the process of searching for research materials, you may review the references in good sample papers that you had already identified and also papers that you are reviewing as well as references in literature review papers, systematic literature reviews, and meta-analysis studies. And ensure you use high-quality peer review journal articles and books in your literature review. What to read and take from each paper depends on what materials you need for the blocks of your literature review. Sometimes you need to review the whole article carefully, and sometimes you need to just review some parts in the literature review, or maybe just the abstract of an article, or maybe just the conclusion or part of the discussion. You need to review what is relevant to your work. See what materials you need to complete your sections, paragraphs, and sentences. As you can see, I've used a double-headed arrow between section 2 and section 3. This means that while you are searching for the content for your literature review, you may get better ideas for the structure of your literature review, and as a result, you may revise and refine the blocks and headings. Actually, this is an iterative process, and it's totally fine to do that. Step 4. Write a critical review. Unfortunately, many literature reviews are just a summary of books and journal articles published on a topic. When I read such literature reviews, I feel I'm looking at the results page of Google Scholar or maybe a shopping list. It looks like you have searched for your keywords and then you reviewed the Google Scholar results one by one and reported each of them in one paragraph. And of course, some researchers arrange the order of the paragraphs or studies chronologically or maybe some of them alphabetically and some from broader to more related to the topic. However, what you need to do is a critical review. It means you need to assess the relevance and significance of the past works to your topic and on that basis decide whether or not to include them. Keep this in mind that all these need to be related to your research topic and your research questions. So critical literature review is about relevance and significance. It means you have to discuss what has been already published and its relevance to your research topic critically. So whatever you are writing, Ask yourself to what extent this is related to your research topic and on that basis decide to include it. Indeed, what you review and write about should improve your understanding of the current body of knowledge and help you clarify your research questions further. But what's the best approach for writing a literature review? I strongly recommend a thematic approach for writing your literature review. By thematic approach, I mean putting together the results of different studies by comparing and when necessary contrasting them to discuss each theme. This will show the whole picture of the literature or body of knowledge on a topic and create a storyline in your review. Support each theme in the form of some sentences or a paragraph with several references rather than summarizing the past studies one by one. Like for example, according to Alex 2020 and then the results of the Alex study and next according to Sara 2022 and then the results of Sara's study. What I mean is instead of reviewing the past studies one by one based on who said what, you review them based on the themes that emerge from putting together different studies. So use a storylining approach rather than reporting the results of the past studies individually. Before sharing my example, I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Your engagement not only helps this video reach more people, but also encourages me to create more content for you. Thank you very much for your support. Let me show you how I have summarized and synthesized the results of several studies to create some themes for my literature review. And also see how many studies have been cited in just two paragraphs. This paper is on the relationship between locus of control and quality of life of cancer patients and has published in the European Journal of Oncology nursing. I posted the link to this paper in the description of this video. For your information, internal locus of control means you believe you have control over things that happen in your life, and external locus of control means you believe things that happen in your life are because of external factors like other people, government, God, or any other external factor. In the first paragraph, the effect of external and internal locus of control on mental well-being and quality of life in the general population has been summarized and compared by referring to several studies. So as you can see, the focus of the literature review is not the studies or authors. Instead, it's the themes emerging from the results. Then in the second paragraph, the literature review has been narrowed down to cancer patients presented as three themes, including negative effects of external locus of control, positive effects of external locus of control, and finally, studies that couldn't find any significant results. And each theme has been supported with several references. And finally, keep this in mind that writing a good literature review is an iterative process. This is why there are double-headed errors 
arrows between step 3 and 4 and also between step 2 and 4. This means while you are synthesizing your literature review, you can keep searching for more materials. And as a result of more search, you may even revise the structure of your review, which was step 2 in this process. So in this process, you may revise and restructure your literature review, add or remove sections and paragraphs based on the new materials that you find and improve the structure and storyline of your literature review. Keep this in mind that at the end, your literature review should demonstrate that you are aware of the current state of knowledge in your field, highlight the research gaps, and show how your research is related to the past studies and the current body of knowledge. A good literature review should show that you are aware of the current state of knowledge in your subject. You need to show you understand your field and its key theories, concepts, and ideas, as well as the major issues and debates around your topic. If you find the concepts, theories, or results of past studies unclear, biased, or inconsistent, consistent with other works and need further research, you need to explain why and justify it. A good literature review should also highlight the research gaps. Your literature review should clearly highlight the limitations of the past studies and the research gaps in the body of knowledge. What gaps do you aim to fill? This is important because it justifies the need for your research. And finally, a good literature review should show how your research is related to the past studies and the current body of knowledge. This means you need to show that you are not reinventing the wheel and your work work contributes to the body of knowledge in the field. Also, you should show that your work builds on the research that has been conducted in the field before you. Further, you need to demonstrate how the current literature supports your hypothesis, proposition, or purpose of the study. To do it successfully, you need to review relevant theories related to your subject and discuss how you build your research on these theories and what is the reason for not using some theories that you don't want to use. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave your comments below and provide a few suggestions for my future videos. If you found this video helpful, please share it with others. And please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel for more videos on publications and research in the future.